It is a fight you cannot win. It is about the losses of few and of many. It is about the last stand. This is the story of Halo Reach. At the beginning of the game, the player is introduced to the Noble Team, which is made up of five other members, George, Cat, June, Carter, and Emil. George is the heavy weapons expert of the group, and Cat is the recon specialist. June is the sniper, Carter is the leader, and Emil is the close quarters expert. And all of these characters at some point in the game will die to some kind of cause, whether heroic or just for the safety of others with the exception of June, who goes on to save an important character in the story. But all of these deaths have symbolism, as the deaths relate to the personality or the occupation of each character. Distance is closing on this vessel's refueling track with the Covenant supercarrier. 76 seconds to end. Damn it. So, it's gonna be like that. The first death comes uh, roughly at the middle of the game, when the player is up on a Covenant ship in space. There's a bomb that needs to be detonated in order to destroy a Covenant fleet, and George says that he will stay behind and manually activate the bomb because some glitch occurred in the system. This is symbolic to the specialization that George has with heavy weapons. And so he dies heroically for Reach uh, by detonating this bomb and destroying the Covenant fleet. Later the player flies around the city to help uh, assist groups in need from the forces of the Covenant. And so one of the last things that the player does is visit the Noble team in one of the buildings in the city. And there they regroup and uh, try to assess what they need to do next and uh, suddenly a nuke goes off somewhere in the city so they run into a bunker but while they're going into a bunker cat gets shot through the head by a sniper and this death is also symbolic since cat uses her brains to assist the team in uh, scouting out enemies uh, in the field and pretty much directing uh, what needs to be done The next loss isn't really a death, it's just June escorting an important character to a different planet. And he does this very stealthily, just like his personality and his job as a sniper. And this character is uh, very important to the universe of Halo, and without it then the events of the other Halo games wouldn't have happened because of June. The next character to die is Carter, and he's the leader of the group, so naturally he would go down fighting with his ship, and that's exactly what he did. He kamikazed a scarab, a giant covenant tank, and this is reminiscent of how in real life captains would go down with their ship. Situation. Mother. We can get past this, sir. No, you can't. Not without help. Commander, you don't have the firepower. I've got the map. Silent cop. Hit him on, boys. You're on your own, Noble. Carter out. Now, at the end of the game, Emil dies, making his last stand in close quarters. He's snuck up on by a few Covenant forces with uh, energy swords and he tries to take them down one by one with a shotgun but it's not enough and he dies in close quarters combat which he usually enjoys to do. Overall these deaths were pretty symbolic of the characters uh, personalities and what they did as a soldier. 
and these deaths also trigger the progression of the story within Halo Reach. So as each character dies, the player is forced to go to a different area or do some new task. And this is pretty much how the game is played out. However, once the mission is completed, the player is left on Reach because he decided to do so. And now comes the very sad part, and that's the player losing their character in the game. He makes his last stand in just a deserted field as Covenant forces overrun the area, and he's the lone wolf, he has to make his last stand. And the game ends with the player dying for Reach, uh, just as uh, Reach falls to the Covenant forces.